It's a question I get asked a lot, especially on apps like TikTok where climate deniers are running rampant and I'm sure it's a question we've all had even if we believe in climate change, and that is, how do we actually know that climate change is human caused? Especially because we know that our Earth goes through cycles of warming and cooling and ice ages and so forth. So instead of responding an essay and linking all these sources individually, on apps like TikTok and Instagram. I'm going to make a full video as well as a blog post version if you would rather read along. You can check that out down below. And now we can all learn together. How do we know that climate change is actually caused by humans? Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I talk about all sorts of things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun zero waste living practically making zero waste accessible for everyone. If you're new here, I would love if you hit the subscribe button and join this community. Let's first establish one thing. What is weather and what is climate? Are they different? Are they the same? I actually have a full video. It's probably like 15 to 20 minutes. If you want a full deep dive on this topic, you can check it out up here, but we'll talk about it shortly. Weather is the events that happens in a daily basis all throughout the world, and they vary from region to region, and they change in just the span of a few minutes, hours, days, or weeks. It's a very short time frame. while climate is looking at the big picture. Climate is the average weather pattern in a given space in a given time, and of course, just like weather, different regions have different climates as well. And we also have what's called the global climate, which refers to the average of all the climates throughout the world. Now, what is climate change? Climate change refers to long-term shifts in temperatures and other weather patterns such as precipitation or lack thereof, temperature, and so forth. These changes can be natural, such as variations in the solar cycle, or unnatural, such as effects from humans' actions. We've already established that our Earth is constantly changing and there are natural cycles of climate change, but the one that we're seeing right now is human-influenced climate change. And I think that's where the term gets confusing is because Yes, climate change has always existed, but what we're referring to now in the present day is human-caused climate change. Here's a great chart from the Utah Geologic Survey. As you can see, the Earth has naturally cooled and heated over its lifetime. So how do we know that what we're seeing is not just another natural fluctuation in the Earth cycle? Over the past few decades, scientists have seen extreme peaks of CO2 which if you don't know what CO2 is, it is carbon dioxide, which is a heat trapping gas. Basically that's why we called it global warming for a long time is because we had gases like CO2, methane, and a few others we'll talk about later that once released into the atmosphere, they trap heat in the earth, which is causing it to get warmer. CO2 is what is most responsible for climate change. And as you can see from this chart from the Union of Concerned Scientists, there is always some level of CO2 in our atmosphere that is considered normal. But take a look at that huge spike that has occurred since the Industrial Revolution. That doesn't look very natural to me. Granted, I'm no scientist, but scientists would agree that that spike is not natural. So what even causes CO2 in the first place? Carbon dioxide is a byproduct of normal cell function when it is breathed out of a body, which is why there is always a certain level of CO2 in the atmosphere. But it is also produced when fossil fuels are burned and extracted from the earth. Pockets of coal and oil are carbon stores. That is where carbon dioxide has gone and lived in the, inside the earth for millions of years, trapped millions of years ago. So now when we extract it and we burn it, we're releasing that CO2 back into the atmosphere at unprecedented rates. And that CO2 is once again trapped in our atmosphere. But again, it's not just CO2, there are some other gases at play here that are causing climate change. So let's talk about those really quickly. Methane, another famous, infamous rather gas that is known for causing climate change. And you can learn more about methane in this video up here about food waste and how sending our food waste to the landfill is the leading cause of methane and how bad methane is in regards to CO2. But methane is an atmospheric gas that comes from natural and man-made sources. It comes from plant matter breakdown and wetlands and also from landfills and livestock. Methane is 80 times more potent than CO2. And again, I really encourage you to learn more about methane in that food waste video. We also have nitrous oxide, which is another potent greenhouse gas. This one is mostly a byproduct of farming. It is released during commercial and organic fertilizer production and whenever we put fertilizer on our crops. And again, it also comes from burning fossil fuels. It has actually, the amount of nitrous oxide has increased 18% over the last 100 years. We also have chlorofluorocarbons, also known as CFCs. They do not exist in nature and are entirely man-made and are used in things such as refrigerants, solvents, and propellants. So think of things like aerosol, those are CFCs. And the last one we have is water vapor. If you're like, what? Water is causing climate change? Yes, and it's gonna make sense in a moment. And it actually creates a really, really vicious cycle. So all these other greenhouse gases we've already talked about, CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, and CFCs are released into the atmosphere. And those greenhouse gases are accelerating the warmth of the planet, which means if you know anything about the water cycle, the warmer it is, the more that's evaporated. 
you see where this is going. This means that there's more water vapor in the atmosphere. Now, while water vapor isn't causing climate change, it is amplifying the effects. The more water vapor, the warmer it gets, the warmer it gets, the more water vapor, and back and forth and back and forth for all eternity, and it's just a really, really painful cycle, as you can see. Now that we've got all the facts established, how is this our fault? I think NASA puts it best, and I'm just gonna read verbatim exactly what they say. Over the last century, the burning of fossil fuels like coal and oil has increased the concentration of atmospheric carbon dioxide, CO2. This increase happens because of coal and oil burning processes that combines carbon with oxygen in the air to make CO2. To a lesser extent, clearing of land for agriculture industry and other human activity has increased concentrations of greenhouse gases. The industrial activities that our modern civilizations depend upon have raised atmospheric carbon dioxide levels by nearly 50% since 1750. This increase is due to human activities because scientists can see a distinctive isotopic fingerprint in the atmosphere. It's in the sixth assessment report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, also known as the IPCC, composed of scientific experts and countries all over the world concluded that it is unequivocal, without a doubt, that the increase of CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide in the atmosphere over the industrial era is a result of human activities then that humans influence the principal driver of many changes observed across the atmosphere, ocean, cryosphere, and biosphere. We could end the video there, but I think I have a few more talking points that are, are, of, are of interest and will help you formulate arguments against climate deniers, or at least they're gonna help me. So let's go over them. We already talked about before how sometimes the sun influences climate patterns. And this was something I didn't really know about until climate deniers on my TikTok were like, it's the sun, the sun is causing climate change. I'm like, what does this mean? This is what it means. This is called solar irradiance and it can cause the climate to fluctuate. Basically it's how close and far away the sun is from the earth, I think. If you are a climate scientist and you understand this better than me and you can explain it better than me, I would appreciate it if you outlined it down below. Scientists completely agree that what we're seeing right now has nothing to do with the sun. The sun has an 11 year solar cycle and studies have shown that in the past, the solar patterns have influenced the climate. But let's take a look at this chart. Well, at the beginning of the industrial revolution, it looks like the solar irradiance matched the global temperature, which makes sense. But in 2020, it no longer matches. In fact, they're opposite one another. So it can be ruled extremely unlikely that the sun pattern right now that we're in is not causing the climate change effects that we're seeing. Okay, maybe you're still caught up in the fact that we're coming out of an ice age. This is a really popular argument I see a lot on the internet is that we're coming out of an ice age, of course we're warming. But of course it's a long game, like it takes millions of years to go into and out of an ice age. And the, the temperature changes that we've seen have happened in only the last hundred years or so. But still, how do we know that what we're seeing right now isn't just a result of coming out of an ice age? That's because scientists at NASA have studied data over the last 800,000 years, which covers over eight ice ages and warming periods. The end of the last ice age was around 11,700 years ago, and that marks the beginning of human civilization, industrialization as we know it. Here's another great chart that shows the ice age norms from the last eight cycles and where we are today. Could it be an insane natural outlier? I'm no client scientist, but the NASA scientists would agree that the spike is very clearly a result of human activities from the mid 1800s to the present day and is continuing at an unprecedented rate that has never been seen before. And since we've been starting to see that spike, scientists have been studying that spike since the mid 1800s. Not only that, but the effects of CO2 on our atmosphere since then. They've seen how it affects tree rings, how it affects coral reefs, how it even affects rocks and literally everything else on our planet. This evidence from a link I will have down below reveals that our current levels of warming is happening 10 times faster than the average rate of any heating period we've ever seen before. CO2 rates are increasing around 250 times faster than it did from any natural source during any other ice age. It's just really clear that this is a man-made problem. Now that we have that established, I'm sure we've all heard that we have like 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. That's like our cap before things can become catastrophic, but it's only two degrees. So why is that number where did they get that number and why is that number important? A change that much in local weather wouldn't even warrant me putting on a coat, but when you're talking about global average temperature, it's a huge difference. But just to put it in perspective, the difference between an ice age and a warming period, like the two extreme ends, is usually only between three and eight degrees Celsius. That's it, a whole ice age. So that's why keeping it under two degrees is so vital because if we get into that three to eight degree range, we're drastically cha changing the climate. So hopefully that makes sense. That really put it into perspective for me. I have never heard why that two degrees thing is even a thing before. And usually at the end of these videos, I have a sort of call to action, like do this to reduce your waste more or contact this person to do X, Y, Z. I don't really have that today. This was just strictly an educational video. Um, if you would like to do something at the end of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you shared it with other people. 
not just climate deniers, but even people who believe in climate change. I have believed in climate change basically forever, and I just learned about this stuff whenever I scripted this a few days ago. And any other engagement on this video, some likes, some comments would appreciate boosting this video as well. Again, I'm not saying that for personal fame and personal gain. I'm saying that because this stuff is very important. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something from it. I sure learned a lot. And we'll share it with other people who don't know about this stuff yet. And there's no shame in not understanding this stuff. We all learn at one point or another. Nobody's born learning all this stuff with their stuff already in their brain. And of course, this stuff isn't taught in school and media sources and also even social media really just put this, they bury this stuff. So that was not talked about because it is scary, but it's also very real and we need to take it seriously. We need to educate ourselves so that way we can make better actions in the future. This is really important why we all need to learn about this. We all need to believe in it and we all need to take action. If not for your own future, because again, climates change over hundreds and thousands of years, we might be gone, but do it for your children, for your grandchildren, for just future generations to come if you have any sort of empathy in your heart. I really appreciate your time, especially if you made it all the way to the end. If you have any more questions about climate change, please leave them down below so I can do a follow-up video. I love talking about this stuff. I love educating myself on this stuff, but I just never really know what kind of questions you guys have. And of course, my platform is for you guys. I wanna educate you on what you wanna learn about. Again, thank you for being here. I will see you in the next video. And until then, remember that your small actions have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Where's the power button? And those accelerate the warmth of the environment, of the, of the, of the... <laughs> is a result of human... We already talked about the before. <laughs>